face this is going to take. Um, I would imagine that these notes would fit up about a page. So I'm trying to zoom out here to show you. Uh, there's the summary. So when I laid this out before, that would take up about a page in your notebook. So let's get started. First thing, how to interpret a position versus time graph for speed and velocity. Now this is something we're going to do quite often in our course, um, and it also lays the foundation to help you understand how to read other types of motion graphs as you move through physics. Let's review what we know so far. Motion is when an object changes its position. And how do we measure an object's motion? The two ways we talked about so far was distance, which is the actual path the object takes, and displacement, which is the straight line distance between the two. Now, if you just walk in a straight line, your distance and displacement are going to be the same thing. But if you ever turn around or come back at all, those two can be different. Now, we learned in lab, we took a look at some of these uh, graphs. We learned that we could take that motion and put it onto a graph for us. And what we created were what we called position versus time graphs. Now, to help you out here, the little x symbol stands for position. The little t stands for time. So if I got x on the y-axis, which is really just position on the y-axis and time on the x-axis, then what we've created is a position versus time graph. Okay, So x for position, t for time. Now, I wanted to take a look here at a little video clip from our lab. So there you are. You can see that the red car and the blue car are moving, and we have the graph being created. Now let's go ahead and put that in our notebooks so we can see what that was looking at. I'm going to start out with the red car. What we noticed is the red car started at zero and it went forward like this. Now our red car was the faster car. All right. And what we noticed about that is it also had a steeper or bigger slope. So we can say steeper slope, larger slope, right? And the blue car looked a little bit different. First thing we noticed is it didn't start at zero. That blue car had a little bit of a head start. And so on a position versus time graph, if you look back where time equals zero, uh, the y-intercept will actually give you the object's position. So since the blue car started up here, which wasn't at zero, that is the blue car's um, starting point. And so that's just a little aside here for it. The y-intercept, or b, remember if you put into a slope-intercept form, that's b. The y-intercept illustrates the car's starting point, or the object's starting point, when time was equal to zero. All right, the blue car looked a little bit more something like that. And what do we know about the blue car is it was slower. And what happens here is it gets a flatter or less steep slope, flatter slope. OK. What we found out is that the slope of a line, how fast an object is moving. OK. Um, so if you look at it, think of it this way, kind of getting ahead of myself here. The slope tells you how fast the car is. With the steeper the slope, the faster they are. Now we talked about this, that how fast really just means an object's speed. All right, so let's put a definition down then for this one. What is speed? Speed is the rate at which distance is traveled. All right, so if we take a look at this now, We've got the definition there, and there's a couple key words that I want to make sure we focus on. And the first one is uh, this idea of rate and distance. So speed tells you the rate at which distance travels. So dist distance is there. We already know what that is. That's how far you go. But rate is used in science definitions a lot, um, and it doesn't always uh, isn't always clear what that means. So that whenever you hear the word rate, what that means is it's referring to the um, amount of time it takes to do something. All right? So we often say that rate's definition means per time, um, or it's how quickly that other thing is going. So in this case, it would be how quickly an object is able to cover a distance. And when you say per time, it's a math term. So what you do is you take distance and divide it by the amount of time. So this would say distance per time. And that is how you actually calculate speed. And where this comes from is if we go back up to the graph, you can see that the distance you travel uh, would be your rise, and the amount of time it takes would be your run. And so what we've all really, really done here is we've just taken a look at the slope from a position versus time graph and done the rise over the run or the distance divided by the time. All right, so let's put that there and put this in a little box. Now, a lot of students might just stop it here and say, OK, good. Uh, slope tells me speed. That's everything I need to know about it. But if we take a look, the slope is actually giving us more information uh, than you might realize at first. And so let's go ahead now and take a look at another video. And what I want to do is see what's going on.
So, what we saw in that video clip is the blue car still has its little bit of a head start. You know, it's not starting completely back at zero and it's moving forward, okay, or away from the detector. But this time what has happened is the red car has actually started further away and comes back in like so. Um, and what we can do with this is we can start to get some more information from the, the slope on that graph than just what we might think. So the blue, blue car, we might say, is still moving at a constant speed. Uh, it's slow constant speed, but we, we could say it was moving forward. And we gotta be careful with the terms forward. That's why I'm putting it in quotations right now. Really, it was just moving away from the detector, but to, to help us understand, we can say that was the forward direction. The red car, on the other hand, was moving backwards. And really, it's just moving the other direction, which means back towards the detector. But I'm just going to put it in here to help us kind of um, get an idea for what that means. So the red car was moving backwards. Now, what do you notice about their slopes? OK, well, let's look at the graph. The blue car is a pretty standard slope. It started low, and it got bigger. So we would say that that is a um, positive slope. All right. But if you were to calculate the slope of the red line, it started high and ended low. And so what's going to happen there is we would call that a negative slope. And this is super important for us to notice because the slope tells us more than just the speed of the car. It tells us the speed, but it also tells us the direction the car was traveling, whether that direction be positive or negative. All right. And if you remember back, we talked about two terms. We said there's, you know, scalars. Oh, I can't spell that right. Now, if you remember back, we talked about two terms. There's ones that we call scalars, and there's ones that we call vectors. All right. When we talked about distance and displacement, scalars have, say, magnitude only, but vectors include both a magnitude and a direction. And why this is important is if we take a look, the slope is actually giving us information on the position versus time graph. It's falling over here into the um, vector category. And so because we have this little piece of information about direction, what that means is the slope really gives us both magnitude and direction. And what that tells us is that we can use the slope on a position versus time graph to tell us the object's velocity. And the simplest definition I have for velocity is the way to think about it is it's how fast an object's going in a certain direction. So we say it's speed with a direction. All right. The easiest way to calculate velocity is because direction is important, um, it's no longer just distance divided by time. Uh, in our case, it will be often because we're dealing with objects that travel at a constant speed. However, the true formula for velocity is a lowercase v. And then what we do is we say it's the displacement divided by time. All right, so there you have it. What I want to make sure you have here is don't forget to write a summary into your notes. So if we take a look here at the big picture for, this, for these notes, it's the idea that the slope of a position versus time graph can tell you how fast or slow something is moving based on the steepness. The y-intercept tells you the object's starting point. And because slopes can be either positive or negative, they don't just tell us just the speed, they also give us the direction it's traveling, and when we put those two pieces of information together, you get the object's velocity, which is a speed in a direction. So hopefully that helped out, and uh, if you have any questions, I'll see you in class.